Hi, and welcome to a new unit of IC210 videos. So this unit is all about compound data, and that's kind of the general idea in any programming language of what we're talking about. But in C, what we're really talking about is structs. So this unit, we're going to learn about what a struct is, when we would want to use that in our C programs, and how they can make our programs much more expressive and really start to get into solving um, real problems in a more natural way. So before we get into some of the details, let me just uh, think about a couple of scenarios that might be relevant. So we can think about, for example, storing a student, um, student database where we want to remember things about all the students and their names and their grades. And uh, so for each student, we want to have like their name, maybe their alpha if you're at USNA, um, and their GPA or Cooper or whatever you want to call it, um, and some things like that. We could also imagine something uh, you know, relevant uh, today as I record this video, it's election day, and uh, we might uh, imagine like election candidates. And so each one of the candidates for an election probably has a name. Uh, I think they definitely have to have a name. Um, they probably have a party affiliation. So that might be important to know. And then if we're tallying an election, then we might want to know like how many votes um, for that candidate. And as we start to uh, think about these things, you can think of a lot of other examples. Um, we could think of like x, y points in a two-dimensional coordinate space um, where you have an x and a y value. And there's some examples about that on the website. Uh, really, you could start thinking about bank account uh, information, right? So th there's a lot of examples we might think of where we want to have this kind of data. And what's What's interesting here, what's new is, so you had something like this that you had to program on your practicum exam, um, where I think it was just like the name and the number of votes. So you could store these separately, where we have like one variable that stores the first candidate's name, and another variable that stores the second candidate's name, and one variable that stores the first candidate's number of votes. And Okay, but, but it doesn't scale very well. And what I mean by it doesn't scale very well is that if we wanted to have more and more candidates, then we would have to create just like more and more variables. And then you might start to think about having an array, but how can you put all these things together in an array? So you could have a separate array of all the names and a separate array of all the party affiliations and a separate array of all the votes. But now you have more than one array, but they're kind of, they all have to have the same size and there's some lining up issues and it just gets kind of awkward. So what a struct is gonna allow us to do um, in C is really to make a new uh, type that you create. And when we define a struct, we have to say, uh, what is in the struct and so we're going to give a name and a type to each component of the struct so for the examples that we just talked about if we have a student database with like a name an alpha and a gpa then maybe the name would be like a c string or a, a character array the alpha should probably be an int and the GPA might be a double because that can be like a, a floating point value. Right, in the case of a candidate, the name would be a string. The party, well, we have to think about maybe that would be a string. Maybe it would be an int. Um, maybe it would be a bool if you're in a two-party dominated system like the US. And the votes would probably be an int. Right, so um, that's what we're gonna define when we, we have to define our new type of the struct. And then when we use it, we can use each part of the struct separately. So what we're gonna look at in this unit is gonna be, first of all, how to define structs and the uh, 
the names that they go along with. Um, so what does that mean? Then we'll look at how to use structs, who to use them. Um, and so there's some new syntax to look at there as well. Like once we have a variable that indicates a struct, how do we get to the inside part of it? If I have a variable that represents uh, a midshipman, then how do I get to the alpha of that midshipman? Um, and then we'll look at how does, um, every time we define a new syntactic piece of the language, we have to understand how does this interact with the things we already thought we understood about the language. So um, the first thing that we'll look at is combining arrays and structs. And there's actually two ways to do that because you can either have an array inside a struct or a struct inside an array. And then the way that we use those is, is kind of in two different, um, two different syntaxes and two different reasons why we'd want to do that. Uh, and then we will also look at functions. So how can we write a function that takes a struct? How can we write a function that returns a struct? Um, functions with structs with arrays, and then some other things like that. So the last thing I think we'll look at is compound structs, which really means a struct inside a struct, which is uh, something exciting to look forward to. So this is kind of how we'll go through this. Um, structs and compound data, it's similar to some things you might have seen in other programming languages, like in Java, what's called a class or Python. Um, but it works a little bit differently in C, and so don't don't rely too much on what your intuition might be from other programming languages, and we'll go through this slowly, and this will allow us to make more useful and more expressive programs.